here we go. I think I have real gym horror stories besides people coming up next to me and just me and them in so the gym. One day I was at the gym just doing cardio on the treadmill. It was pretty empty. Not, not very many people were there on a Thursday at noon. I always used the treadmills in front of the mirrors so I could pay attention to the surroundings. I was on a treadmill two away from the end and all of them were empty except one at the opposite end. This man gets on a treadmill right next to me. Oh. Which is weird, but okay. Yeah. I have my headphones in and I'm watching a show. And every so often I look up at the mirrors just to check on my surroundings and Every time I look up, this man is staring right at me. Mm. 37 minutes of my 45 minute plan cardio workout. He, play, he planned he drops something. His phone, but he drops it on the side that I'm on, off his treadmill. Of course. I was watching in the mirror. Trying to smell your booty. threw it down next to me. He gets off the treadmill, picks his phone up, and then he taps me on my shoulder. Now, I never took my headphones out, so I couldn't really hear what he was saying. But it seemed like he introduced himself, but I never called his name. And then he asked my name, and I gave him a fake one. He then said something else, and it looked like I couldn't really tell. I couldn't hear him, but it looked like he was saying, do you want fudge or something? I don't know why he would ask me that. Fudge. But reading his lips looks it's like he said, do you want to fuck? Do you want fudge? Do you want to fuck? I couldn't hear fuck. him. I just nodded, and I returned to my show, clearly uninterested in whatever he was saying. At this point... I only had like five minutes left, and every time I looked in the mirror, he was staring. Probably, right at me. probably should have muted I your um, I went to the music, that is near your the show, table. so you could hear what was going on. The mirrors. I also took a glance at how long he'd been on the treadmill. And it was something like eight minutes or so, but it wasn't long enough to get a workout or even a, a warm up. When I moved to the stretching area, he moved to the closest machine and was still staring at me. I actually caught him staring at me when I was on my back and I had my legs behind my head. Yes, that is a stretch that I do. He then walked a little closer. And yeah, I was about to say, point, what? I took off. Oh, God, no. I got out of there. I ran out the door. I didn't look back at all. I got to my car, sat down, turned it on, and I grabbed my seatbelt. And as I was about to click it into place, my passenger side door opened and I saw that man reach across the passenger seat. Oh, I yelled at him to get out and off my car, and, and I pulled out the parking spot with both doors wide open while he was holding onto the door. Yeah, why would you? He fell off the car why was your... holding on for about 20 meters. I drove a mile down why the road with the passenger open? side door open. When I got home, I noticed that the man dropped the bag on the floor by the passenger seat. In that bag, he had duct tape, a hammer, and some spermicidal lube. Then the next day, I went to the gym to report A him. hammer. Like I said, I never got his name, and the gym didn't want to look at the cameras with me right there. and said that once they figure out who he was, they'll let me know, and they'll talk to him, which really didn't feel like they were doing anything about the talk situation. So the next week, I canceled my membership, and I never went back to that gym. Yeah, you did good. We'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation. It's like, you know, it was just boys being boys. Why were you being so stuck up? <laughs> I feel horrible. I'm just playing. I, I, like, I feel like someone would say some shit like this that. This all started when I moved into our new house. and Till they found out he had a hammer. Membership. I'm 5'3 and I look pretty young for my Fucking age. Yorkshire Ripper. But anyways, so one night at the gym, I saw this weird guy staring at me and sort of following me around. Honestly, he looked crazy. And he looked like a shell-shocked soldier. He was very socially awkward, quiet, but he looked like a smart person for some reason. He had a huge build. He was big, probably about six foot four. You look he smart. Like a bodybuilder. So then he eventually passed by the machine I was on and he looked directly at me, almost like he was reading me. It was like a deer in headlights. My gut just told me that I was in trouble. <laughs> so eventually I get up and I head for the locker room. I always listen to your gut. And no surprise. He headed for the men's locker room which was right next door. I made myself literally sit in that locker room for about 20 minutes to make sure that he would not leave the same time as I did. 
So I peer out of the locker room and I don't see him. So I start heading out to the exit. And out of nowhere, this guy literally pops out of nowhere <laughs> and heads out behind me. At this point, I'm now accepting that challenge. Fight or flight kicked in and I was ready to fight. I slow down and I stare at him with the most serious. You were at a fight. Did you say he was like six four? Around. He was like five three. He walks three. to his car and I walk to mine. We were staring at each other the entire time. I stand there in front of my car and I stare as he gets into his car. He then lowers his head and gives me the most bone chilling, evil eyed stare anyone could ever give. It kind of made me chuckle. I waited for him to drive off. So then I figured I lost him and I started driving home. I live in a very small town with neighborhoods with dead-end cul-de-sacs. So right before I turn into my neighborhood, this SUV rides up behind me, on my tail aggressively. I know that man followed me after that, but I have no idea how he did because he was very stealthy. I'm pretty sure this guy is ex-military or something. Just by his demeanor, he looked about 36 years old. He had an <laughs> SUV. And just everything weird. screamed ex-military. Same age as me. So anyways, ex-military. Three days go by, <laughs> and my husband leaves for work. An hour or so goes by. And Except I'm not 6'4", I'm 6'2". And I hear my front door open. Oh, the front door open. Someone just walked into my house. My heart stopped. I had no idea. You walked in was. real easy. Was the door locked? I creep out of my room, and I see all three of my kids are fast asleep. I walk over to one of their rooms and I look out of the window to, to the street. Then my heart dropped. A van was parked directly in front of my house that I didn't recognize. Is there something wrong? It was an old unmarked van that was parked at a very unusual diagonal angle and it was running. The lights were on. So I started stomping and screaming and making noise. And I waved and I started flickering the lights in my house. I was trying to threaten them and get the attention to the, of the person outside. So the van races off and it leaves whoever in my house. Then all of a sudden, I see this man emerge from under the window with his face completely covered in a clown mask. He was running away from my house. But get this, he had that same build as the guy from the gym. It's just unmistakable. He's huge and I don't really see people like that around here. At first okay, I that's not me, that's just the video. The guy dropped multiple pictures of me leaving the gym and going home. My husband saw that van apparently once after that and it was three weeks later and it sped off when he walked outside. My brother in law oh, wow, this a couple is... weeks after that came to visit and had to park around the corner. He told me he saw a guy walking by the house and he looked very suspicious. When I asked the description, he gave me the same description as that one guy that I saw. Jeez, at the gym this dude is and obsessed. The one who ran away from the house. Honestly, I'm creeped out and I really don't know what's going on. And you have a stalker. To me. Oh, that's it? No resolution. But you have a stalker, my friend. Might want to call the police or something. Two summers ago, I got a membership to a local gym. It was about two minutes away from my summer job, so... I usually went to the gym after work to avoid a ton of driving. My shifts were 6 to 10 p.m. and I'd be leaving the gym by 11. Now I live in a small and generally safe town. So my guard is <laughs> generally people. safe. One night while I was working out, a man that looked to be in his mid to late 30s started making Why are these people in their 30s? They late, especially they late, especially they late 30s. Days. I'm a people pleaser, so my responses were always courteous, but as short as possible. I never asked any questions or kept the conversation going. I didn't think much of it, but each time I came back, this man would either greet me or make small talk and I'd be polite, but my headphones in as usual. It didn't feel that serious or fair to me to start going out of my way to avoid him until one night. I got off work around 10 p.m. as usual and I went to the gym. That man was there along with another middle-aged man. Mm, I got a yeah, short back up. As I was on the flat bench press, as I lay back down, put my arms up to grab the bar, and I began to smell what I would say was cheese. And one of those men poked me in the head with something. He grabbed one of my headphones out of my ear and asked that I need a spot. Whoa, what? It startled me, so I jumped up quick and I told him no. I 
was so pissed that uh, I didn't finish my workout. What the hell did he poke me in the head with? Oh, it's no. Like old cheese. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I think she got poked in the head by a dick. <laughs> dick cheese. Oh, no. No. Oh. And especially touches somebody. I don't know why that, like, I mean, we speculate, it smelled like cheese, I'm assuming. And he said poked in the head with something. I feel like he's alluding to that she got poked in the head, but by the dude, dude poked his dick. He used his dick to poke her in the head. And he was working out, so it smelled like dick cheese. And the, the the thing is, I feel more disrespected by him taking out her uh, one of her uh, her AirPods and asking her if she was in the spot. Like, don't fucking touch me, especially like that. Like, you want to pat me, or, or like usually get in front of the person and be like, like gesture that you're trying to get their attention, and then they'll take it out. Don't. I'm like, don't fucking touch me. Like, I will rip your fucking soul out through your ass. Like, don't touch me. <laughs> what the fuck? Afterwards, I went back to my car. Poked. The gym was in the shopping center, and the parking lot was huge and dark. Ripped his dick and balls off. Of Out of habit, I locked my car when I got inside, and then I started to touch my boyfriend. Good. Suddenly, I heard my passenger side door handle get tugged on hard. Hard enough that if my car wasn't locked, it absolutely would have been open. A lot of people don't lock their cars as soon as they get in. My in. Car and smiling. He laughed at the fact that I probably looked startled. He waved, and then he tugged on the handle again. He saw that it was locked. He's oh, he oh, 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 I didn't so get he stopped. you. He looked over the car toward the gym, Dead. and he waved over someone. It was the man that poked me in the head. He began to run toward the car, and I sped off immediately. I'm not sure if he was planning on doing something some bad. Some bold motherfucker. Yeah, he's he planning on doing something bad. No. But either way, it, it was a creepy situation and it was inappropriate. So I stopped going to the gym at night for the rest of that summer. And honestly, I carry a weapon on me everywhere I go because of that situation. Sheesh. Like, nah, there was ain't no damn prank. Like, this dude pulled that because he was, he was thinking. Most people get in their cars, they don't, um, must be it. They don't, uh, they don't immediately lock their doors when they get in their car. I'm guilty of that. I don't always lock the, hit the little lock button when I get in my car and my doors unlocked. I just, just wait until I, you know, pull off because my doors lock usually about, Maybe five, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe about six feet. And then the car starts rolling in, and they'll, they'll lock. So I think my mom's car, like, hers locks when she reaches a certain speed. I think when she reaches, like, a mile, an hour, it'll, it'll lock. But, no, nah, he wasn't playing with you. He pulled that knob. And the doors were locked, and he like, <laughs> and he tried to pull it again. And he's like, oh shit, the door actually was locked. And he like, come on, come over here. And maybe we gonna, you know, maybe he got a tire iron, break the window, and and pull your ass out. You know, nothing like that. What was was that the first story? Where they said that um, he got in that car and, she, and he opened the door, and she sped off with. She said her driver's side and passenger side door open. So why did you get in your car? If you were trying to leave quickly, why would you get in your car and not immediately close at least your door? You know, I know that the passenger side wasn't it wasn't locked. So he just opened that door and tried to jump in. But she said you sped off with the driver and passenger side door open. <laughs> so your door was open too. <laughs> like I, I mean, maybe because where I live at, they start. Well, this happened actually in a lot of places. It's not just here. Because you would think it was happening here, but it was happening all over. 
the world. People started doing like carjacking people. But um, because I was here, I'm like, oh, I don't want someone to pull up. And my, I have a, you know, I have a nice looking car. So, well, now I do. Anyway, so I don't. I'm, I'm a little nervous because one, there, there was a time. This happened. Well, I think it was like it had to be last year. Yeah, it was, it was last year. I think. Oh, yeah, it was because it was still a little cool outside, so it wasn't fall. I think it was like in between winter and spring, or like right around when it started to get a little bit warmer. But it was, but it was at night, so it was cool. And I was walking to my car from from the grocery store. So I'm walking to my car. I passed this dude walking in the grocery store. He asked for some money. I, I don't really carry cash on me. I ain't had no money on me. So I was like, yeah, sorry, I don't got no money on me. And he was gone. You know. And it was funny because he didn't look like because I've seen, you know, homeless people over there before. He didn't look like, you know, them. He he looked like kind of like a regular guy in the type of clothes. Like, he was just out there just trying to see if he can get beg for some money and the people would give him some. You know, okay, well, that thing they call them, like, professional beggars, except he wasn't even pretending to be. Like, you see some of them, like, they pretend to be homeless. They put dirt on themselves or get, like, ragged clothes to make themselves look more homeless. This dude was, like, he had Jordans, had a black hoodie on, black Adidas. I think they were Adidas. But they had the, you know, the, Stripe. I remember that. They had like the little three white stripes down the side. And he had some design on his shirt, on his pullover hoodie. I don't remember what it was. But I remember it was red. And anyway, I was like, sorry, I ain't got nothing. I go inside, get my stuff. I'm coming out. He's gone. I'm walking towards my car. This dude comes out of nowhere. Like the same guy. I was like, what the fuck? But he when he came, I was already pretty much, I was like maybe, a, I don't know, a car, maybe one away in the, in the far as the parking spots away from my car. And I had that much so open, like I opened the, the, the trunk, the little button, opened the, just pretty much took everything. Because <laughs> I saw the dude walking toward him, he was just like, took everything and just <laughs> threw it in the trunk <laughs> and slammed the hood. And I tell you, as soon as I slammed that hood, this dude, I looked over, this dude was sprinting, like, towards me. And I was like, because at first I'm like, yo, 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 you feel like your mind playing tricks. And like, because it's, it's night, the dude was wearing, like, black colors. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's not. Like, in my head, this is what I'm thinking. Like, he's not sprinting, I'm tripping. Or maybe he's, you know, jogging to... Leave or something, maybe trying to catch a bus or something. I don't know, but I don't think the bus was running that late. Cause this was like, when the buses, I don't think the buses stopped running. I don't know. It's been a while since so I got on the bus. I know not, like downtown they run pretty much nonstop, but um, I don't know out here in the suburbs. I mean, it take hours for the fucking bus to come anyway. But you know, I'm just like and thinking in my head like, okay. Like you, 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 you might be over exaggerating. They threw him running towards this dude. Haul off, sprint towards me, and I, and I went over to my, to my door, and I just like I was reaching down like I was getting something. Now I did have my knife in my car, but I was reaching down like I was getting something, and then it stood back up, and then when he run, he stopped, and then just darted like he, he was like he was coming straight towards me. He stopped. When I got back up and I had like my hand like in front of me, because I, I didn't have a gun, but I did have my knife in my car, but I didn't have it. I didn't reach for it. I just pretended like I had like a gun. And he just darted. Like it was like this, and then just a straight 90 degrees. <laughs> like just boom. And then just, and she's like, he started running that way. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, what the fuck was that? And like I said, this is around the time when, when when it's being reported, more people like cars getting stolen, people was, you know, walking up to people, putting or running up to people, putting guns in their face, telling them to give them their car and stuff like that. 
and because somebody got shot um not that far from me actually um i think because it's expressway over there and across we go over the expressway it's a walmart and it's a gas station on the opposite side of the street because i remember that years ago somebody asked me for like uh, some money to give them because they truck had they ran out of gas and he didn't have any money so he was like i forgot my wallet and i gave him uh I think I gave him like 40 bucks. And because I had just gotten paid. So I was like, I gave him 40 bucks. And I'm thinking, like, you know, because I have people approach me, especially outside of grocery stores and ask and stuff. And he went, he walked right across the street and got in his truck. He had a pickup truck. He was sitting right there at, a, at, at one of the pumps. He went and inside, got gas and put in his truck. And I was like, oh, he was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have, I guess he didn't have his wallet maybe he was like, um, but um, I don't think he would just think oh I could just I could get some money out of somebody out of, out of nowhere you know <laughs> but um, anyway yeah that, that guy he just darted oh, I haven't seen that guy so I still go to that same store but I haven't seen him since they don't use they don't use because they, they used to have people out there almost every day um, you know asking for money and stuff I haven't seen him recently. Well, I shouldn't say recently, but in the, like in the past seven, eight months, I haven't really seen. I haven't seen anybody out there asking for anything. So, no, we're not eight months. Probably like uh, probably like five and a half months. Not that. Not that. But um, yeah, that started me. I was like, yeah, because they got a guy got uh, uh, banked. I was the I and you finished the store. But a guy got shot, like a 14-year-old got shot. They pulled up in some car, and I think three of them jumped out. When I put a gun in some old, this old guy's face, I think he was like in his 80s or something, trying to steal his car. And he had a, he had a gun on him. And uh, he pulled that gun out and shot him. And the other dudes jumped back in the car and pulled off. And he shot him and killed him. So I'm like, I mean, it's sad, you know, 14-year-old kid's dead, but, hey, you out there stealing shit. You know, you're doing it just for fun because they're stealing cars and then stealing more cars in those cars and then joyriding them until they just run out of gas. You're like, you ain't even taking them to a chop shop or nothing. You ain't doing nothing with them besides stealing other cars. <laughs> and then when these cars run out of gas, you just leave them. And then just and then and then do what you want to do in that car. So I'm like, well, what are you, you stealing cars for? Like these people, they steal cars, they they chopping them up, or they doing something to make some more money in it. Like you just stealing cars, like hoping that, that um, I'm gonna spit on it, hoping that um, I guess they leave a wallet, and because the people were doing that, where when you were at the gas pump, and people would just people don't lock their doors. And a lot of things, a lot of women leaving their purse and like in the front seat or on their armrest, whatever. And somebody would pull up, and somebody would get out and sneak and open the the, the, the passenger side and snatch their purse and get jump back in their car and pull off. You know, so that's why I always like lock my doors. Always lock your doors. People, some people will see stuff. You 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 might leave stuff in there, and you don't even be thinking about it. And you leave your door unlocked. Person just open it, grab the stuff, close the door, and walk off. I mean, not even close the door, might just walk off. Hey, I, 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 I tell you, I've, I've known people that, like, one of my friends had um, his GPS stolen, had it in his in his car. This is before, really, I guess, cell phones really had good ones, so, but until he had, like, a big old one that he had on it, because I, I used to have a big one. I got a, a much smaller one because that one, um, well, it wasn't mine. It was my dad's. So he had let me use it, but then when I moved, I gave it back to him, and I said, I'll buy my own, and I ended up buying one. But I bought a much smaller one because that was much cheaper. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that uh, he had one, but he had a big, a big, big old screen like that. And he had taken it off, and it was in his passenger seat. And he said he came back to the car, and it was just gone. 
He was looking on. He like, what the hell? Like, where? He looking under his seat, and it was gone. And then he realized, because I guess he thought about it for a second. He said, like, I didn't lock my door. And I was like, yeah, you you don't lock your door. I've seen, I've literally seen people. And and I went to the neighborhoods where uh, I went to a party once, my, my uh, cousin's birthday party. And it was, you know, kind of on a, kind of like seedy part of time. I mean, it had some crime in it, but it wasn't like, you know, horrible, you know, but it they had crime in it. And this was around, shit, I don't know, it, was, it had to be like two, three in the morning. And I'm leaving. And I'm, well, I was on the phone with my uh, girlfriend at the time. And I'm leaving, walking outside. And I see some people walking, like, on the sidewalk and people in the street. Because first I saw people on the sidewalk. And then I happened to see somebody walking out. Pretty much, you know, at the same time they were in the, in the street. And when I walked over to get in my car, because I had to walk in the street because I parallel parked on the street. This dude was walking and, like, pulling knobs, trying to see, like, what doors he's like. And he just walking and pulling knobs. And I was like, because the first time, you know, because I'm, I'm always thinking, like, okay, you you jump to conclusions like that. So I, I'm, 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 like, looking, and I'm pretending like I'm trying to fumble with my key to get in my car, even though I could just press the button and open it. And uh, I'm sitting there, like, like just looking. And then they, he walked under a light because there was a lot of trees there, too. He walked under, he happened to walk under a light, one of the street lights. And I could see him clear, and I saw it clearly, like, he was, like, pulling out, and they just walked to the next car. And I, I don't know, I guess he was going, people walking with him, he was going to open the door and unlock the car, and they was going to be able to jump in or something and they'd probably just look for anything to grab. I don't think they were on hot wire or anything. But they They didn't. You really look like the type that knew how to hot wire it, but you never know. But uh, I, when I got in my car. I was like, they doing that? I don't know. They, I mean, they probably just walk past me because they're trying to just see what they can grab and then leave, you know. So I said, like, probably won't try to do anything to me. But you never know. So <laughs> I got in my car and locked my door. <laughs> and I was sitting there talking to my girlfriend. I was like, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting there like this, like, like look. I was like on the phone, like yeah. And I'm looking, up. and they walked by and the dude like what he like looked in the car. Well, they both like looking at the car. And they just walked by. And I was like, that'd be some bullshit. Like he tried to open my door with me right here. I was like, this dude don't give a fuck. But uh, yeah, yeah, be careful. Right here. Crazy, but uh, well, you always had to be careful. That's what people get uh, lured into a false sense of security thing. Oh, I live in a safe neighborhood and I can just leave my doors. I'm like, I would never do no shit like that. Because even though I was in Mississippi, some people would tell me they would do that. But I was like, you have people who come in, like just, just walk in from out of town and they rob people. You know, they're not, they don't live there. So the police ain't really looking for them. They live out, out, you know, outside the skirt, you know, out, outside the city limit. And they'll just come in rob somebody, especially people who live close to the city limits, and then gone. Go, and they'll walk, yeah, they put that shit in their bags or whatever, walk to another town and go to a pawn shop and try to pawn that shit. You know, so I'm like, no, I don't care where you live. You need to have your damn doors locked. You need to have some weapons in there that you can use, whether, I don't know, a damn kitchen knife, or you actually bought like a baton or you bought a combat knife or you got a gun, you know, whatever. You can't be can't be playing with this shit thinking, oh, I'm so, 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 I'm so safe and I'll be fine and until you're not. <laughs> but anyway, hope you all enjoyed my reaction. One. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to subscribe when you're here. Hit that bell if you're notified when I upload new videos. Comment down below. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.